Now, I'm going to start by telling you something a lot of people don't know about, which is the original Jesus was a space alien, um, in a sense. Uh, we know from Philo of Alexandria, who's writing in the 20s, 30s AD, uh, that he, um, this is a, one of the greatest Jewish theologians uh, of the time, and he wrote about a particular angel in Jewish angelology, and he says that this particular angel uh, is the same character named Jesus in this particular Old Testament passage in Zechariah that he points out. So that here we have a passage in the Old Testament with uh, a god na or a, an angel named Jesus, and Philo is saying that that's this particular angel, and this is what he says. Uh, he says, this angel is the firstborn son of God. Does that sound familiar? He says he's the celestial image of God. He's God's agent of creation. In other words, God couldn't be bothered to actually do the creation. He actually sent this angel to go do it for him. And he's God's celestial high priest because, you know, everything on earth is all dirty and messy and you've got to have your own super uh, amazing space alien temple. Um, so you have the temple on earth is just a dim copy of the true space temple. Uh, and you have to have a true space priest for the space temple. And the interesting thing with this, though, is that this is exactly the Jesus that's in the epistles. All the exact same attributes, same guy. So in fact, the Christians were worshiping a pre an angel in Jewish angelology that already existed uh, before there would have been any historical man needed to explain the origins of the, of the religion. So it looks like that's what they're doing there. It looks like Jesus of the epistles is just like Gabriel, Michael, and the other angels. It's just a particular one, the supreme angel, uh, that did all of this stuff and had all of these attributes. So we know that. And in Philippians, it tells us that the earliest known Christians, uh, and this is what the Christians did that was different. Um, Philo's talking about this particular angel, but the Christians added a twist, and what they said is, the earliest known Christians believe that this pre-existent being descended, became incarnate, and died, and rose again, then appeared to select people to tell them all this. That's, the no that's what we see in Philippians and in 1 Corinthians 15. Now, what if this incarnation, death, and burial took place in outer space just below the moon? And you might be thinking, why on earth would we think that? Uh, there's some reason. Uh, one is that the same was taught of Osiris. Uh, Osiris was the savior god of Egypt, the neighboring province to Judea, and Osiris had his own evangelists missionizing uh, his religion all throughout the Roman Empire. Public stories about Osiris put him on earth in earth history. <coughs> but private stories, the stories told to initiates of the cult, put his death and resurrection in outer space just below the moon. The earthly stories were just intended to be allegories or to conceal the true cosmic uh, message of the religion. So this was already going on. So if you're going to create your own dying and rising savior and you've got this neighboring uh, dying and rising savior over there, you can see how it would be easy to adopt the same model and just convert it to a Jewish idea. There are also precedents in Jewish belief. Um, Adam was believed to have been buried in outer space according to the revelation of Moses either on Venus or Mars, depending on which uh, scheme they were using at the time. So um, if you really want fundamentalist Christians to increase the budget of NASA, uh, you can maybe convince them that we might find the bones of Adam on one of those planets.